Hey guys, thanks for coming back to the channel. Today it's a little colder than it's been, and we've got a couple freezing days so far. Good thing we have this hot house. I built this hot house in replacement or a temporary replacement of our greenhouse, which is kind of falling apart. I need a whole new cover and all that. So I need to build this quickly in the interim. So I built this out of tile wood, obviously, that's what I do. Old greenhouse fabric and survival blankets. You want to see how he did it? Check out the video. Let's jump right in. Here I'm going to use some two inch screws and three quarter inch plywood to just sister two pallets together. I'm going to use it on the top and the bottom just to make it nice and secure when I move it around and put it in its final destination. You can see here I got this giant piece of cardboard from cutting up a big, huge shipping box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this cardboard to form the floor of the hot house in an attempt to add some insulation and kind of a windbreak and to fill in the distance in between the slats of the pallets so that the hot house will kind of have a proper floor for all the plants to sit on. So this is completely self-explanatory, but I'm going to explain it anyway. Here I'm cutting the cardboard to fit both sides of the now sister together pallets and I'm gonna bang them in place with some hog panel nails. Mm, there you have it. Hey, what's up? I cut down some two by fours with the idea that I'm gonna use that to build the walls of the hot house. Cut the two by fours in half. It will make the hot house not so heavy when we have to move it. Um, but I forgot to hit the record button and I already cut them without recording it. But I'm pretty confident you can cut a two by four and a half. So let's move on. Keeping with the recycled material idea, this uh, thin flat stock you see me nail into the back of the hot house, it seems to be like quarter inch MDF or a quarter inch press board or something. It's the stuff they use in warehouses to line their metal shelves so that there's no holes in the metal shelving. You guys probably see you know what it is, but it works perfect. I've used it in a bunch of projects. It's on the walls of my shop. It's even in the drawers of that standing desk I'm working on. So I'm just using it here in the hot house as well. All right, I'm going to show you how I am going to cut a bird's mouth for this little hot house right here so the rafters fit a little snugger. So I want this this line and this line to be extended onto this board so i'm going to take my speed square and run it on the pivot until it's parallel with this line see how i just line it up right there so it's lined up here i'm going to draw my line i'll then run it down to the pivot down to the other side get it lined up parallel I'm going to run my line right there. So this line's extended up, this line's extended up. Now what I have to do is I have to cut the, I guess this is the heel and this is the seat. So I'm going to take my speed square and I'm going to run my speed square on the pivot. This is out of my way. Until my speed square is parallel with this line. And then I'm just going to run it up keeping it parallel right here. It's going to run it up to this intersection and draw that line. And this right here is going to be my bird's mouth. Now, I know that's not the right way to do it, but that's the way I figured it out right here, kind of on the fly for this little emergency hothouse that we're building. Hope that helps. Okay, I'm not an expert expert framer in any way shape or form but my little hack down method of getting a bird's mouth works pretty close for government work all right so i'm working on this hot house that we need for overwintering some pepper plants and starting seeds uh because the greenhouse i have is kind of a little wonky it's starting to get show its wear and tear so this hot house is going to serve for our greenhouse over the winter to keep some plants alive and to start some seeds in the early or late winter, early spring. Um, you saw me build it, build the frame out, put the rafters up. 
Now I'm going to use, which I think is kind of a cool idea, these Mylar safety blankets that come in your first aid kit. I'm going to use, I'm going to line them to add some insulation, of course, like a windbreak. And I think the reflective nature of the safety blanket is going to help bounce around and reflect light and keep the greenhouse effect going. So let's go ahead and line this inside of this. All right, so some of you out there watching me do this, so let me go ahead and try to staple it on, and you probably knew that this Mylar blanket wasn't going to hold up to the staples. You could have told me. I do have this metal tape. All right. Metal tape it is. That looks like it's gonna work. That's gonna, I'm gonna tape it all down, get a good way all the way around it, pull it tight. That's gonna reflect a lot of light. Let's go and put all the rest of it on. All right, so in the last part of the video, you saw that I was putting up the um, survival blanket, you know, the Mylar reflective stuff, and I ran out of space on the, on the foam. So I finished the Mylar, and now we're gonna use this recycled greenhouse uh, material to start enclosing the hothouse. So what I'm gonna do is I have a couple of these strips from an old greenhouse, I just didn't throw away the plastic. I'm gonna start tacking these in place, and I have one big piece to see if we can do the sides. And then what I'm gonna do is fabricate kind of a movable slash sealable door and top so I can put all the plants in there so they can overwinter. So um, without further ado, let's check it out. All right, you can see I kind of put up, I kind of got the pieces um, held in place. It's pretty windy out today. So I'm just trying to make it work. All right, so you see here how it's not, it's not quite a full piece, right? So I'm going to layer it. And I'm going to run this one up real high so that the overlap, the top part overlaps where this seam is, you know, so water will run off properly. All right, so here's that, kind of the big piece I told you about. I'm not really sure what I'm doing. All right, and I see the side here. I don't want to cut it flush with the bottom of the greenhouse or the pothouse. I want to leave a little bit of material so I can tuck it under with an attempt to help seal it and keep whatever critters out. Yeah, 
I say critters. All right. Let's see if we can figure out the other side. All right, so we have this pretty good piece left over, but it's not quite big enough to cover the space and leave me enough to tuck underneath. So we're gonna go ahead and make a piece of fit on here. I think it's going to work out fine. Make it there. I want you to keep in mind too, I'm going to leave this up so that I can grab up underneath here and uh, I can move the hothouse. Obviously it's not going to stay here on front of the shop. So I want to be able to grab it here and carry it over where I want it to sit. All right, here's the top of the hot house. I don't know if I showed you guys that or not, but I've been working at night, so a lot of it's kind of hard to film. But this part's gonna open up. And then last night I built this front part. I'll show you what that looks like inside the shop. And uh, again, I was building at night, so it's just kind of miserable to film it. And right now we're gonna go ahead and skin them and put the remaining plastic and greenhouse fabric I have on it. Here's the front part of that hothouse. This is gonna kind of be just freestanding and wedged in there and then held in place by a couple of um, like slide brackets that we'll just put on after the fact. But go ahead, let's get it covered up. Here's the top of the hot house that I showed you earlier in the video that I told you I was building at night. Um, we're just going to go ahead and cover it with some excess greenhouse fabric, just like the other pieces. Let's see how it's done. Uh, you can probably tell that I overlap this on the bottom. This is the bottom of what's going to be the the um, top of the hothouse is at the bottom. The reason I overlapped it is because our front piece that we made is going to sit in here and I want there to be some seal to not let the cold air out. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the video on the hothouse. This is, uh, is actually the second time I'm making this video. Uh, the first time I had a bunch of, I had all the, I had all the video together, put it in the editor and I was working on it and the uh, camera was running out of space. The video editor crashed. My computer had to get all re-imaged. Man, I, I don't know what happened. So that whole video production was, was a wash. So then I went and then put it all together, put it in the, in the editor again, got it all to work. We're now at this spot. And at being at this spot, you could see that the last part of the video was kind of lost. So basically, after I went and covered the top of it, I just assembled it and I put, um, I have a little video I'll show you. I put some screws in just to work as hinges for the top of that hothouse. Talking about, guys, there's a three inch screw on one side and three inch screw on the other side. It just acts like a, an axle, like a hinge or a, a pivot point for that top put the front on with some extra pieces of board to hold it in. Hothouse has been working great. Uh, we've had about half a dozen so 
days of freezing already, which is kind of uncharacteristic for us this early, but it's been down below, below 30 a couple times already. And the pepper plants that I have in there are just fine. They're all, they're all still green. Some of them are even showing new growth. So, uh, once again, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Like and subscribe. Hey guys, if you do me a favor, put a comment or two down in the bottom to tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, uh, thumbs up kind of thing. Even, even any, any criticism, anything. I'm just, I'm real new at this. I'm trying to figure it out. And, um, as you can tell, I got a lot to learn, but I hope the videos are getting better. Let's get this YouTube channel rolling. All right, guys, here's some bonus material for you. These are the pepper plants that the hothouse is keeping alive as we get these freezing temperatures. Like I told you in the beginning, this is about six, six days or so now that we've had freezing temperatures, some of them even less than 30 degrees, some of them in the 20s, and these, these peppers are doing well. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.